Your letter was only the start of it. One letter, and now you're a part of it. Now you've done it. Jim has fixed it for you. You and you. Theme to uh, Jim will fix it there. Jimmy Savile presented Jim will fix it was of course um, a rapist, uh, a paedophile, an all round kind of pervert, the uh, Zach type of person that Graham Linehan, the former um, comedy writer, imagines um, most transitioning men to women to be. But of course, people like Jimmy Savile are always drawn from majorities, aren't they? They're never drawn really from minority groups, typically. It's never people who, um, you know, on the margins of society that for some reason do these things. It tends to be people from the boring run-of-the-mill mass, you know, like Peter Sutcliffe, for example, who we discussed uh, in the previous video, was just... Um, uh, a married heterosexual lorry driver from Bradford, for example. Um, yes, I was going to do a video on Israel-Palestine, because I know that you're, you're desperate to hear my views on that. But then I thought to myself, no, 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 no. Uh, that would be, uh, that's a transient concern, doesn't have any real white um it's not not particularly interesting in terms of the impact on western civilization no i want to do something that matters and that's why i'm here today to talk to you about graham linehan who you may or may not know is currently engaged in a war against trans activism and gender ideology to save womankind um yeah an existential War of attrition, which, uh, what's at stake? Um, all of our vulvered friends out there. Hello, welcome, welcome. No, you don't usually watch the channel. Thanks for watching this video. But yeah, they're all they're all in terrible danger. Um, in this country, Britain, where I'm transmitting from, there are uh, about 32 million women. There are only 670,000 trans people in the country allegedly um but um yeah women are in danger the spaces their rights all the rest of it from from this this small minority which itself contains uh, many subcategories and um is engaged in in an attempt to try and work out what the hell to do about uh the problems that um bedevil um those those very uh, fragile and um, vulnerable existences that people have when their very sense of self um is in question so graham linhan then why are we talking about graham linhan well, he's got a book out he's got a book out called tough crowd um that's you and me we're the tough crowd and anybody else who isn't 100 percent uh signed up to graham's alarmist moral panic um and he's written a book uh it's a memoir it's not really a memoir because essentially the vast majority of it is an account of the last five years his sort of struggle now when i say the vast majority of it actually that's a lie i told you i've told you a lie the first 170 pages or so is about his career in comedy. That's the memoir part. But Graham doesn't have quite enough material there in order to bulk out a full tome. Um, and really what he wants to talk about uh, is his struggle with trans rights activists. So the, the book is a fusion of the two things. Part one, my life and career. Part two, the last five years, and that's where really he he comes alive. 
because the first half of the book is just, you know, the usual kind of show busy backstage anecdotes, which are quite interesting, but, you know, not particularly. Um, oh, he drank so much with uh, Dylan Moran once, Black Book's fame, that he, he had blood in his urine. There you go. There's a showbiz anecdote for you. That's in the book. And then he moves on to uh, the stuff that really gets him going. The fight of his life, the fight to defend womankind from the scourge of um, trans people. Not all trans people, of course, because Graham's keen to say that, you know, trans isn't a stable category. He's talking about the, the chancers, the interlopers, the deviants, uh, the people who are, are using the cloak of, of, of being trans to uh, enjoy their kinks at, at women's expense. But if you've looked at Graeme Linhuden's Twitter account or indeed read his book as I have, then um, you could be forgiven for thinking that's most trans people. Now, I've written a review of uh, Graham's book, Tough Crowd, and what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to talk about it. In fact, I'm going to read it to you. You're too bloody lazy to read it yourselves, aren't you? And I'm going to expand on some points as we go through it. Is that all right? And by the end, you will have both received a review of the book and will have had a sort of one-sided discussion about it as well. So it's two for the price of one. Marvellous, isn't it? Great what you can do. So let's, let's have a look at the review. Here it is. Now. Uh, I've headed it gender hoopla because that's a phrase that Graham uses in his book to describe the kerfuffle, if you will, um, that's been caused since he's been engaged in this um, existential struggle for the future of womankind. A struggle that you in your everyday life may not have registered, but it's happening and um, he should know because he devotes... 130% of his time to it. But but let's begin. Um, if you don't know about the comedy writer turned white knight, Graham Linhan, chivalry, uh, you'll find, is a, is a theme that crops up in this book. You'll be shocked to learn he's one of the most significant troubleshooters of the past 30 years. You'll recall Father Ted, a charming Channel 4 sitcom about three priests living in Pastoral Island. You won't recall it broke the Catholic Church stranglehold over Irish consciousness. You'll remember I's referendum on legalising abortion, but you failed to register how instrumental Linehan and his ex-wife were in emancipating women on the Emerald Isle. You go through your day-to-day -day lives oblivious to the fact that Graham Linehan his father inculcated in him an unapologetic chival 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 chivalrous, chival chivalrous, chival chivalrous, you know, chivalry. Because, Graham Linhan tells us, without irony, those who suffer the discomfort of menstruation deserve to have a door open for them. Yeah, he really said that, you know. Oh, women, you know, they're in such a... <sighs> such a disadvantaged position because they have periods that we, we should do things for them. We should open doors for them and pull out chairs for them and things. Come to their rescue. They're so fragile, aren't they? Women are so fragile. <sighs> Lenin's fighting a terrorist insurgency against a group of nascent fascists. That's his term, by the way, nascent fascists, um, who are trying to destroy all womankind. Uh, not everyone accepts Graham's self-documented achievements, however, and it's these Linehan sceptics that form the tough crowd of the title. 
Um, yeah. So the thing here is that Graham Linhan's um, very keen in the book to emphasise um, his activist credentials. And he wants readers to understand the fact that he is not just a sitcom writer who's in over his head and who's got involved in, a, in th this argument. Why should it concern him as a, as, a, as a man? Why can't women speak for themselves, etc., etc.? Well, of course, the fact that he's a man doesn't preclude him from having a view or indeed joining the battle. But um, he wants the reader to understand that he is someone who's got involved in a lot of things. He, he's, he's, he's determined that you should know that when it comes to um, evil institutions that keep women down, like the church, for example, because he mentions the, the Magdalene laundries and so on, um, he's been there and he's been on the side of women for the most part. So you may think that changes in Irish society, um, admittedly highly belated changes in Irish society, um, weakened the stranglehold of the Catholic Church on Irish consciousness or whatever. And, um, but no, it was Father Ted played its part. Father Ted, the sitcom. When Irish people saw that, they just couldn't take religion seriously anymore. <laughs> it's like, what have we been, what have we, what were we thinking the last 800 years or whatever? You know, it's outrageous. Thank God Graham Lennon came along and disabused them of their superstitious nonsense. And there he was again when it came to um, the referendum in Ireland to um, legalise abortion. Now, some of Graham critics would say that was a preemptive act on his part because he was trying to ensure that plenty of trans kids couldn't be born. It's a joke, by the way. Obviously, he wasn't trying to do that. I just thought, maybe I thought it was quite funny, but but you know, there he was fighting the good fight for women. He's always been at it. He's always been fighting the good fight for women. And that's why he can't let men think they're women, and they can't let them intrude on women's spaces. It's all part of the same thing. Trans activists of the new Catholic Church. Don't you see that? The review continues. Self-righteousness and a lack of self-awareness partner like meat and potatoes. Phallic. Genital reference. Um, tough crowd is an embittered rally against those who vilified the former sitcom king, a bit generous, for identifying with a series of reason propositions uh, that sex is observed, the body changing surgical interventions on prepubescent children is problematic, that women should be protected from predatory men. He's stunned by his inability to achieve consensus on these points while showcasing a propensity for zealotry in Richard Little John like exaggeration that would make the Daily Mail columnist double take. So, yes, what I'm saying here is that Graham Linehan may, and I'm I'm going to shock you now, he may have some perfectly reasonable points. Sex is observed rather than assigned, isn't it? In the vast majority of cases, we look at a newly born baby boy or baby girl, and we observe that they are biologically male or female. The trans question comes later, and it is um, a psychological issue and, and perhaps a philosophical issue as well, I think. Biology doesn't have to be destiny, of course. That's not really the argument, is it? The argument is... Is society best served by having a more philosophical view over what one can be 
whether you know humanity is a uh, form of poetry that is this within a very strict verse form or can there be can it be a free verse poem can it break out can it be free of all of the traditional constraints that used to constitute the human condition but that's not a question for this video I merely make the point that you know um, it's, it, it doesn't make you a monster to say that sex is real and that gender is a social construction. And it doesn't make you a monster to say that if children are desperately, desperately unhappy because of gender dysphoria or what have you, or they're just not happy with their bodies and who they are physically, that we should carefully consider how we help those children. And that life-changing surgery may not be the way it might be a solution that uh, allows somebody's mental health to to be restored but it may not be and it's not unreasonable to say perhaps we should pause until people are old enough in order to make those decisions for themselves and when they are old enough to make those decisions for themselves they should receive as much support and help as they can so we can try and determine what the the right course is because you know in some cases we may be talking about unnecessary surgery which uh, as as everybody who's had major surgery will know is um potentially life-threatening so graham linehan if i think graham linehan had put forward those propositions in a sort of politically neutral way i don't think that he would be vilified as he is now but the problem is he hasn't done that he hasn't done that he's decided to uh take the perspective um, and adopt the perspective and the rhetoric of the zealot, ironically, for a man who's who's very anti-Catholic uh, church, <laughs> he, I mean, you know, you can take the boy out of Ireland, but he's, yeah, he's pounding that message home um, in a way which is um, extremely inflammatory and um, extremely reductive, and. As I point out in the review there, he reminds me very much of Richard Littlejohn. Because Richard Littlejohn um, does the exact same thing. Not on trans issues, but on just about every other issue. So I make the point in the next line of the review. This is the difference between saying immigration creates inner city tension and immigration is a threat to uh, Judeo-Christian society. Right? So it must be halted at all costs. Um... One is a reasonable proposition that is well observed. Immigration, of course, does create inner city tension sometimes. Not all the time. Some communities uh, get on reasonably well with one another. But to say there is no such thing as um, racial tensions within cities is obviously palpably absurd. Of course there is. Whenever you put any uh, any group of people with any other group of people with whom they don't identify, then that creates that is a threat to community cohesion. The trick is how do you get the community to cohere? How do you smooth over those differences? That's the question, isn't it? But so if I said that, I think you would most of you would agree well that's a reasonable proposition that's not you know that's not that's not fucking enoch powell's river of blood speech is it but if i said immigrants coming here is a threat to western civilization 
and it will lead to the wholesale destruction of of our society. Well, that would be um, an absurd bit of hyperbole, and that is the kind of nonsense that Graham Linehan revels in. Except uh, he's taken the absolutist position that that is the truth of the matter, and that if you don't agree with that, extreme position then you are underplaying the problem or that you're blind to what's really going on trans people are a threat to womankind it's a threat to women's rights the biggest threat to women's rights in the last hundred years what's sometimes called gender affirming care the the idea that you know in order to help a person self-actualize, if you like, you would consider an option whereby you may surgically alter their bodies so that they look like they, the person they imagine they are. You know, so that the shell fits the, the person as envisioned in the mind's eye. Um, that, for Graham, is the biggest scandal since thalidomide. Thalidomide, of course, you'll recall, is, is, was a drug administered to pregnant women that caused deformities in children, in children to be born without arms and legs and so on. Of course, the difference there was that uh, the women uh, didn't knowingly consent to a process <laughs> whereby their children would be born without arms and legs and the, the children in, in the womb had no say either. And it was a mistake, a medical mistake. But it's one of, one of many invidious, com, compar, you know, and uh, ridiculous comparisons that, that Linhan makes in his book. Anyway, um, Linhan equates attempts at realising an impossible object to child or adult who's Gender dysphoria can be cured by appropriating transient masculine and feminine stereotypes to the sadistic predations of Nazi doctors. Delighted with this silly and frivolous illusion, he doubles down, drawing parallels between his betrayal at the hands of the comedy establishment and that of Anne Frank. Yeah, it's true. Nazis reoccur in tough crowd of stock villains so often that one imagines it was being ghostwritten by Glenn Dayton wrote uh, SSGB, amongst others. Um, yeah. There are no easy answers to uh, the problems that trans people experience. What What is the nature of somebody's dysphoria, the hatred of their own body? Now, it may be that they feel that they've been born in the wrong body in the figurative sense. Of course, not. I, I would argue you can't be born in the wrong body. Your body is the only body you'll ever have. But if you don't like your body, if you hate it, and if your body to you is a sort of constant reminder that you're uh, locked into one social category which you don't feel you belong to for whatever reason, then that is a problem, and it's some, it's a problem that has to be um, fixed. It's not a problem I've ever had in my life, thank God. But for the people who do go through it, I, I can't imagine what it's like. It must be incredibly difficult. And I don't blame trans people one bit for wanting to take a shortcut to some form of gender-fluid acceptance. I mean, we don't have long to live on this planet, right? We can't wait two or three hundred years for society to uh, to become much more relaxed about what constitutes masculinity and what constitutes femininity. We can't wait for, you know, those uh, archetypal gender roles to um, to disappear. And so there are men and women out there and teenage boys and girls out there who look at it and say, well, I can't wait. So I want it now. 
And the easiest way for me to have it now is for my body to match what today is considered to be the archetypal representation of the opposite sex. So I can join that group and become part of that group and live as part of that group. So I feel able to be performatively myself. I don't blame people for, for going down that road. But the reason, of course, that there is a, an inevitable backlash to that is because um, this is a unique situation. It's the first time in the history of the world that a minority have sought to appropriate the identity of another group. And so, naturally, one would say, well, there has to be some discussion between that minority and that group. Uh, there, has to be, uh, there has to be consent. You know, women are entitled to be protective of their spaces and so on. But the question is... Um, are trans women, that is men who have transitioned to become women, are they a threat to womankind? And, um, well, I don't come off the fence often, kids, but I have to tell you, I don't think they are. But what do I know? Anyway, the review continues. And Graham, Graham Linnan really did compare himself to Anne Frank, by the way. <laughs> mm. It's astonishing that Linnan, a writer, is oblivious to the impact of rhetoric and the framing of arguments in engendering popular consent. The book's refrain is a call to the wisdom of crowds, the common sense of the common man. But there's no moderation and little compassion in Linehan's account of his own struggle, his arguments are incendiary in a bid to overpower his online detractors and shame the book's real audience, the media set who were instinctively suspicious of hyperbole and a propensity to extremes in order to create a moral panic worthy of the great man's lost prestige. Um, yes, I mean, I'm afraid, this is a personal view, but I'm afraid that I think that Graham Lennon's more concerned about his lost reputation and... Um, attempting to forge a new reputation as a as a women's rights uh, champion um, than the fight itself. And I can't prove that because I can't see inside Graham Linehan's head and I don't have access to Graham Linehan's consciousness any more than Graham Linehan has access to the consciousness of trans men and women. But, you know, he does mention that that aborted father Ted musical an awful lot. You don't hear other other activists talking so much about, you know. Their uh, their pet projects that they've had to give up because of the struggle. They talk about the struggle. But Graham Linehan regularly conflates the the fight for women's rights with the fact that you won't be able to go to the West End and see another fucking musical based on an old TV show. I mean, when you put it like that... Early on, Linehan leverages the juxtaposition of his treatment for testicular cancer with the dawn of the vitriolic backlash to his trans views for pathos. Yes, yes. The former, he tells us, is a mere flesh wound compared to the unrelenting assault that followed. But if you don't believe in coincidences, and I don't, you might think this threat to his masculinity, coupled with the prospect of self-annihilation, is instructive. Men passing themselves off as women when Graham, a real bloke, has just lost part of his manhood, the audacity. And if that reads like English, English literature wank, 
the biographical fallacy, then consider whether badging trans supporters as complicit in child molestation and trans women as chances and rapists isn't equally reaching. So, yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm no psychoanalyst, paging Dr. Freud, etc. But um, is it a coincidence that, that the real v Graham's first real salvo against trans right activists, I mean, his proper, full, you know, relentless uh, assault uh, against them on Twitter came when he was on morphine, having had just one of his bollocks removed. You, you tell me. But, you know, I can't help but think that that might have had something to do with it. I think that's psychosexually interesting at a time when both both his existence and his manhood and his masculinity were under threat and here come some people saying you know if a man wants to become a woman or a woman wants to become a man then they that that's fine and something about that just didn't sit well with graham and his one testicle But of course, as I point out in the review there, that's just a bit of amateur psychology, isn't it? It's just anecdotal. It's just circumstantial. Much like Graham's views on the alleged motivations of, of trans women trying to get into women's spaces. He doesn't know that they're rapists. He doesn't know that it's a kink he doesn't know that they that they just want a chance to to rub up against women um in changing rooms and you know uh, swimming pools or whatever i mean it seems to me a very extreme way of doing it but it's a lot of a lot of effort for not much reward, wouldn't you say? But Graham's got it into his head that that's the case, and by God, he's he can prove it because he's got some some anecdotal evidence to back it up. His Twitter stream's full of it. Every single day, he finds a deviant. Now, by the way, um, if you're plugged into social media and you've got literally access to potentially to everyone in the world who's got a broadband connection and a Twitter account or whatever. If you can't find people who are sexual deviants, then you're doing something wrong. Because they're all life is there. And the, it's the old uh, thing about social media being an echo chamber. It can work the other way around. You can use it to find exactly the type of people that you don't want, if that's what you're looking for. It's not hard. But how many people like that are you going to meet in your, in your real life? The answer is not many. Not many. Because there aren't very many, are there? If the whole trans community is 670,000 people, well, what proportion of those people, unless you're Graham Linehan and you believe that the whole community is essentially uh, one set of, uh, you know, fucking paedophilic, raping, grooming lunatics. What proportion of that community is going to be um, deep, real deviant? Well, every community in the world is subject to entryism. There are a few lunatics in the Conservative Party. Sorry, Graham. A few perverts in the, the, the Conservative Party. I don't see Graham Linhan going online and advocating for the destruction, the wholesale destruction of the Conservative Party. Though you and I might think that's not such a bad idea. There were, of course, at one time, entryists into the Labour Party did not represent the majority of members. You see, any mischief maker could
can infiltrate any organization or any community if they wish to do so. The question is, is it is that the whole community? Is that what they're really about? Is that the impetus behind the vast majority of people in that community? What do you think? Tough crowd asserts that trans activism is a middle class indulgence, a petty bourgeois fantasy world, a form of escapism of the kind once the exclusive province of science fiction fans like Linehan. But readers are invited to find references to being dropped from dinner parties telling. Yeah, Graham, Graham once had a very much a, 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 a sort of low middle class existence, I suppose. Or maybe middle class existence. He hates middle class people now, apart from himself, obviously, because he sees he sees all of this, you know, pro trans activism as uh, as a middle class indulgence. But um, you know, anti trans activism uh, is also a middle class indulgence, as, as we'll we'll go on to explore in the next paragraph. His memoir tells us. His income has fallen off a cliff since he began fighting this battle on behalf of women who apparently cannot speak for themselves. Linehan's solution is to find media-related workarounds, Substack, Stand Up, YouTube. No regular form of income like a real job is sought. Therein lies a tacit acknowledgement that those preoccupied by survival and the boilerplate demands of everyday life are unlikely to have the headspace to fixate on gender ideology. Working class women, the kind Linehan never meets. You know, I don't think there are too many Sharons or Karens or Julies or Tracys in, uh, in Graham's inner circle. But, uh, I, I, you know, I'd love to be proven wrong on that point. Uh, do not register an existential threat to their sex class. Hardly surprising as they outnumber trans women 50 to 1. Yeah, well, that's, that's about right. But despite this, Linehan asserts he is one with the majority of people who, paradoxically, for a man enraged by the indifference of his peers, hasn't given the matter a first, let alone second thought. Conventionality, wrote Charlotte Bronte, is not morality. Self-righteousness is not religion. To attack the first is not to assail the last. Um, I love that, particularly the first part of that quote. Conventionality is not morality. Absolutely right, Charlotte. Gosh, you were terribly smart, weren't you? Um, yes, of course it isn't. Which is why we, you should always be suspicious of anyone who hides behind the mantra, I represent the common man. My views are the views of the vast majority of people. Are they, mate? Well, fucking good for you. Since when did that matter a tapney fuck? Common sense is no sense. People can be wrong. The crowd can be wrong. Now, I don't really believe in the mass because the mass is a figment of the imagination. No one knows the mass, do they? We only know groups within it, individuals, families, people. But that isn't to say that there aren't widely held opinions. Graham Linehan knows this. If he wanted to be part of the crowd in Ireland up to about 2015 or whatever, he would have been in a country that thought that uh, abortion should be illegal. That was the majority view until it wasn't. If you lived in Scotland... It was illegal to be gay until 1982. You know, the crowd doesn't always get it right. There's a majority out there who want to bring back capital punishment. Do you know that? It tends to hover just over 50%. Do you believe in capital punishment? Conventionality is not morality. And the point is, 
that the people who really care passionately about the trans debate are people who have thought about it in some length. They've gone into the nuts and bolts of it. They've considered it from all sides, one would hope. Now, Graeme Linehan has his view. But then, as we've already observed, there may be factors informing that view that mean that it isn't exactly clean, that it's not objective. It has been shaped by certain ideas and prejudices and instances and forces within Graham Lenehan's life. Those factors, those crosswinds, if you like, have brought him to his present position. But please, don't be disingenuous and argue that your views represent the vast majority of people. You know, if you're Graham Linehan, the vast majority of people have no idea what to think on this issue because they haven't given it a fucking thought. But they do know, they do know instinctively, intuitively, when something sounds overwrought or hateful. And that's a turn-off, and that's the lesson that Graham Linehan has not learned. And one suspects he will never learn. Of all the comedians who've betrayed him, who've thrown Daniel to the lions, the only one named is Stuart Lee. In revenge for putting Graham in the bin on his end-of-year list of cultural undesirables, Linehan waspishly relegates the celebrated stand-up to an also-ran. Yes, he talks about more successful comedians. Well, Russell Brand was uh, is a more successful comedian than Stuart Lee. I know which one I prefer. But Tough Crowd evokes a terrifically routine about the IRA being good old-fashioned gentleman bombers whose demands could be realised, exemplifying a sense of British fair play. Um, he compares them to Al-Qaeda, whose stated aim was to destroy Western civilization, a founding principle that made meaningful compromise impossible. It's a fantastic um, bit. You uh, seek it out. What does Linehan want for the, quote, entire gender ideology movement to be burnt to ashes, end quote? That's right, the wholesale capitulation of those trying to integrate trans people into society's mainstream. Terrorism, incidentally, is another of the book's hysterical metaphors. Yes, he already refers consistently to um, the trans rights activists as terrorists. So, so. <laughs> the Al they're the out Al today's Al Qaeda, except of course they're not, are they? Graham is Al Qaeda in this example, and you know, if anything, trans rights activists are perhaps the IRA, in that they are seeking something which is, excuse me, difficult. That is to say, the wholesale acceptance of trans people into the mainstream of society to the point where they are invisible, where there is no differentiation between trans people and biological men and women. Now, we can certainly get there. Of course we can. It's not impossible. It's achievable, isn't it? But it will take time because you have to get past people's prejudices. And also, as I said earlier in the review, transient ideas about what constitutes masculinity and femininity. These things are not fixed. They change over time. And that's what makes physically changing your body to to match one of these archetypal representations, in my view, problematic. Although, as I said earlier on, I completely understand why people would do it as a sort of acceptance, a shortcut to acceptance. Don't never judge anybody for doing that because I fully understand how fucking awful it must be to live in a society where um, people make assumptions about your identity just on the way you look. We've all experienced that to one degree or another, haven't we? And that's the world in which we live. That's the society in which we live. And it's difficult. Fucking hard. 
But the demands of trans rights activists are achievable, which isn't to say that what the way they, they want to go about it isn't flawed. I don't believe in closing down debate, and I don't believe in co-opting language, and I don't believe in, um, you know, uh, trying to control people's thoughts. One of the ways you try to control thought is through language. People should be free to debate these things, free to debate the use of things like pronouns and so on. All of this stuff is needs to be talked through. And we're only at the beginning of the conversation. We're not anywhere near the end. We will get there. But it will take a lot of time. And a lot of mutual understanding. And maybe um, a wholesale rethinking about, you know, how we look at men and women full stop. I don't know. I don't have any of the fucking answers. What do you want? This is a YouTube channel. I'm not going to get the answers from me, kids. I'm just here to ask questions. But what Graham Linehan wants is the equivalent of Al-Qaeda turning up and saying, I want the destruction of Western civilization and we won't stop until we get it. Well, of course, no one in Western civilization is going to go, oh, uh, oh, right, yeah, yeah, sure, 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 we can do that. Um... Uh, so you want us to regress to medievalism, do you? Um, yeah, all right. Um, okay, well, I'm going to go and, you know, just destroy all the material goods in my house that, that are example of my sort of uh, uh, adherence to the capitalist dogma. I'm going to give up my job and so on. And, um, and I, I, I'm going to, gonna, you know, uh, wind my beliefs back. Seven, eight hundred years. No problem at all. If you've got demands, make them reasonable. Make them achievable. What does Graham Linhan want? What's his end game? as I've postulated in another blog post? One I suspect he's read, actually, because he refers specifically to his end game in his book. Another thing he says in his book is that he never searches for his own name on Google or social media, which uh, <laughs> is the least convincing assertion I, I've ever read. But OK, I believe you, Graham. Thousands wouldn't. And I don't. But anyway, um, Graham wants um, the LGBTQ plus movement to just throw their arms up and go, fair enough, mate. We'll just say no more about it, yeah? Sorry. I don't know why I'm imagining them as cockneys or whatever. I don't... But that that's the idea. Oh, well, yeah, sure. We'll stop fighting for trans rights. We'll stop fighting for equality before the law. We'll stop writing for the right people, fighting for the right people to uh, possibly have... Uh, surgical interventions if um, their doctors believe that that might be the only way to uh, restore their mental health. That's a, imagine having to make that trade-off, your physical health for your mental health, your body for your mind. What a fucking awful dilemma that must be for anybody to have to go through. We work, we hope, toward the day when someone can have both, where they don't need to physically change the way they look because of the stupid fucking prejudices of everybody else. But we're not there yet, are we, kids? So Graham wants something which is impossible. He's not going to burn the gender ideology movement to ashes, not least because the gender ideology movement is not going to remain stable and fixed any more than the category of trans is going to remain stable. It's an evolving category, 
not because it's as Graham Linehan says, it's based on, you know, um, moonshine and, and, and fairy tales, but because understanding is still embryonic. Yeah, it's still, we're still getting there, aren't we? We're still trying to work out what it all means and what we can do about it. How do we help people? We don't know. We're not sure. This is also relatively new. And that by the it's because it's relatively new, by the way, that it's a very bad idea to come down very hard on one side of the fence or the other until we understand just what the hell we're talking about. You know, we need time and we need understanding, as in all things, to come to any safe conclusions, if indeed there can any be ever be any safe. The review ends. Yes, we're getting to the end. <laughs> Ultimately, it's the impossibility, recon uh, the impossibility of reconciling Linehan's position with social justice and cohesion that makes this memoir psychologically intriguing but politically worthless. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if Linehan's side of the argument, as he calls it, win out, that leaves a lot of people on society's margins in a very difficult position. What Linhan is saying to them is you have to remain on the margin. You have to remain in your box. You're a bunch of fucking deviants and you've got to stay in your in your land of perversion. Where you belong, you sick bastards. That's what he wants to happen. <laughs> but of course if you're um a trans person and you are confused about your place in society or you feel vulnerable or you're you're going through a bit of an identity crisis as it were then it's not the Graham Linehans of the world who are going to help you emerge from it are they it's people who are trying to empathise and, and want uh, want us all to be able to live um, lives of acceptance and, and happiness. A man who laments trans activists adopting the rhetoric of gay struggle famously adopts the ancient arguments levelled at gays and lesbians that their sexually unregulated, animalistic, paedophilic and a sexual threat in prisons and public spaces. One suspects this is news to the majority of trans people. But Linhan's seen that argument coming and has an answer. Trans is an unstable category. There's authentic trans people and the interlopers, the would-be Jimmy Savills. And any trans-affirming law protects both. One's tempted to ask, name a law that regulates sexual behaviour that doesn't cover both the psychosexually sound and the deviant. Every human interaction is a roll of the dice. We're left to consider that what Graham needs is not his tough crowd, but tough love. Someone who'll pull him from his rabbit hole before the entrance collapses, burying him alive. So, that's the deal. That's the problem. Right. Graham Linhan believes that most people on the you know, trans side of the debate are sexual deviants and all the rest of it. And of course, we know historically these were the same things leveled at um, the gay community back in the day and so on. Um, and rather than recognise that, that it's uh, the same old prejudices being reheated or the same old emphases at the expense of the vast majority of the, the group who are not going to be involved with any kind of sexual deviance. Um, rather than recognise that, Lenin's got a counter-argument, which is 
they're cloaking themselves uh, in the the language of gay rights as a veil of protection. Well, maybe uh, they're cloaking themselves in the language of gay rights because from their point of view, it's a very similar struggle. That That's an alternative explanation, isn't it? Which is it? So that, in a way, brings an end to our discussion of Tough Crowd by Graham Linham, a book I can't say I really enjoyed very much. Um, I did find the backstage stuff on his comedy marginally interesting, a sort of note in the margin. I enjoyed those sitcoms back in the day. But what I was looking for um, with the polemic half of the book was the, the knockout blow, the the set of arguments that would convince me that Graham had measured these things and balanced them out and moderated his views to the extent that he could say with a degree of objectivity, this is the truth of the matter. And remember what I said earlier, there is a difference between stating a set of reasoned propositions, which if you like, you can use as first principles. And I know Graham Lennon would say, some trans rights activists won't even accept the first principles. Well, they won't, but th th that needs to be debated and discussed. There's a difference between doing that and then having made those assertions, making the leap all the way from reasoned argument to they're all rapists, they're all sexual deviants, they're all paedophiles, and anybody who... Uh, is, is shocked by that or, or, or anyone who finds that language a turn off is a groomer. That's right. If you disagree with Graham Linehan, you are automatically a groomer. You're someone who is aiding the molestation of children. And if you, if you think I'm joking, look at Graham Linehan's Twitter stream and, and you'll see for yourself. So, that concludes this video on Graham Linehan. <laughs> lots, lots of uh, light, almost no heat, I'm sure you'll agree. And now we, we're all educated on that subject and, and that one's solved. Next time, we'll move on to the aforementioned Israel and Palestine question. Um, in fact, I, I, I'll tell you now, I'll give you a preview. I've solved it. And in the next video, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how. So until then, um, have a great time doing whatever you're doing in, in your own strange, degenerate lives. And remember, if you like this channel and these videos, then give me your fucking cash through the PayPal link in the, in the thing. Because... You're giving your money to Russell Brand, and I deserve it more, surely, right? Particularly now I've vouchsafed my liberal progressive credentials. So let's let's hear no more about giving me no cash. Let's start giving me some money. You know? I've got holidays to go on. I can't fuck about. You pay for the holiday. I'll do a video from the beach resort. How about that? So, thanks for watching. Um, I've been Dr. McAvoy. It's my real name. And I'll, I'll see you next time. Or not. Um, I don't know. Bye.